out in my backyard lurks an invasive predator. Only question is, can I catch it? What's up guys, welcome back to Can I Catch It, the nature show all about finding a wildlife adventure right at home in your own backyard. Do you have a taste for adventure like exploring? Subscribe to my channel and come with me as I explore my wild backyard. So today, we're after one of my all-time favorite animals, the praying mantis. But not just any species of praying mantis, today, we're after the invasive Chinese mantis. These guys were introduced by accident over a hundred years ago and ended up establishing a breeding population, so it looks like they're here to stay. While these guys are much more massive than the native praying mantises here in the US, they don't seem to be causing too much of a problem, so looks like it's just another species that we get to catch here on the show. Now these guys are one of the most common praying mantises in the United States, so odds are you can find one right at home in your own backyard too. To find a praying mantis, you have to know what kind of behavior to look for. Praying mantises are ambush predators, meaning they're going to be waiting on plants for prey to come by. The best places to look for praying mantises are in gardens, on tall leafy plants, bushes, and overgrown brushes. For me, a patch of wild fennel by the street usually yields a praying mantis catch. So that's where I'm going today. The wild fennel is a tall, feathery, stalk-like weed whose sweet sap attracts a wide variety of insects. This fennel brush here, with the interlaced fennel branches, vines, and grasses, acts as a dense vegetation center for a wide variety of herbivores to congregate. The diverse plants also give great opportunity for different animals to camouflage, including our target mantis. They'll be found perching on the tops of the plants, hoping to catch a flying insect as it buzzes by. Whenever I enter this fennel patch, it's like walking into another world. A few steps in and the dense vegetation completely cuts off my view of the road, and I find myself surrounded by the feathery stalks and the various insects that call it home. I typically find a wide variety of grasshoppers, leafhoppers, and katydids while I'm in here, so I know that their typical predators are probably nearby. On this stalk, I actually found a praying mantis, but this one is only a nymph. We're after the full-grown adults. I actually found a few more nymphs. Have a look at these guys. Chinese mantises actually come in two different varieties, brown and green. Against the green backdrop, the brown ones will be pretty easy to spot. However, the green ones may pose more of a challenge. It's this camouflage that the praying mantis used to its advantage. As we all know, insects are not very smart. They'll be feasting on one part of the fennel stalk and may wander over to another part, but they don't realize that this other part of the plant has these front claws that shoot out, grab the insect, and the last thing it sees before it dies is the praying mantis as it starts to feed. While the pale green variety of the praying mantis may be more difficult to find, People like us are a lot smarter than insects, and we'll be able to notice if a plant seems to be praying mantis shaped. So, after some persistence and patience, we should be able to find our praying mantis. Like I said before, these guys are one of the most common species of praying mantis in the United States, so catching them is really only a matter of chance. As long as you're in the right place at the right time, and looking in areas that are favorable for finding a praying mantis, you've given yourself a pretty good shot at catching your target species. And that's exactly what happened. After some time searching, I noticed this guy sitting in a patch of grass underneath the canopy of the fennel. This is an adult female Chinese mantis, and I'm gonna try and catch her. All right guys, we've got her. Time to get her up close to the cameras. Have a look. Its slender shape and pale green coloration give it perfect camouflage in the leafy environments that it calls home. But the adult praying mantis actually has one feature that sets it apart from the nymphs. The adult praying mantis, even females in this species, have wings. While only the males can fly as the females are too heavy, the wings serve another purpose as well. When a praying mantis is threatened, it will show off a defensive display, flashing the colored wings to ward off predators. The arch of the back, the display with the claws, and the expanded wings make the praying mantis appear bigger, and potentially could ward off some predators. Now, in aggravating the praying mantis to get to show off this display, it turns out I must have aggravated her a little too much, because she ended up running out into the street. And here in central North Carolina, people drive like maniacs. So, I figured I'd probably head out and rescue her. Only problem is, little Miss Praying Mantis was still pretty mad at me, and decided to take a chunk out of my finger. Fortunately, I was able to coax her onto my hand, which I then used to bring her back to the fennel stalk where I found her. Always an exciting find, encountering a praying mantis in your backyard, and I hope you guys get to find the same. With that said, that's all for this episode, and I hope to see you guys again next week. But until then, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.